call the old horse barn here at Penn State Horse Farm. We're standing at the original barn for our current facility. Interesting thing about this barn is that part of this barn was actually located up on the main part of campus, up around where the Ag Administration Building is now. Um, and that part of that barn was moved down here in 1929. You can see right behind me actually the hand-hewn log that is used to support this part of the barn. And over the years, that original barn was, was added to. It was used to house the draft horses that worked the fields that were surrounding this area. And we've transitioned from draft horses and spent a little bit of time in the Morgan horse industry and even had some Arabians for a while. 1955 brought the first quarter horse to campus. Um, Sorrel Chief was a yearling stallion that Penn State actually acquired from Michigan State University. And from there, we've kind of focused on the American quarter horse. Uh, 2020, we received a certificate from the American Quarter Horse Association for having bred quarter horses for 60 consecutive years. Uh, very few universities are on that list and we're proud to be one of them. Over the years, this facility, this barn, has been used to house stallions and also brood mares whenever foals are born, uh, mostly uh, in the spring of the year. Right after bears have their babies, they're brought up here and housed for a while until the weather gets nice, they can go outside into pasture. Originally this barn had a wing off the end that consisted of four run out lots. A couple of years back we had some uh, technical problems with that part of the barn and it was removed. But we've been fortunate to add on a new part of the facility that we're going to uh, walk through here. This new wing of the old barn was completed here in 2020. So you're getting a pretty brand new look at this facility. And um, a primary use of this facility is going to be to house young horses. Um, you'll see that there's some outdoor lots where the horses can be in and out at the same time. And we also have eight brand new stalls. If you want to come down through here, you can see that each of these run out areas is divided um, by two doors. And you might ask yourself, why do you have two doors to the same lot? And the thought process was, one of the uses for this facility will be for research in the future. And one of the magic numbers for our research projects is eight. So it's gonna make things a lot more efficient for our researchers as we move forward. This is a 13-year-old stallion. His name is One and Only. We call him Uno around here. Over the years, a big part of the, the Penn State Horse Program has become the Quarter Horse Breeding Program. And we've been extremely fortunate uh, to provide our students the opportunity to work with some of the best quarter horses in the country. He is by a horse called Invitation Only, and out of a mare, we're talking radical. This is red, white, and good. Uh, we call him Irish. Irish has been here for three years. Irish is by a horse called Zippo's Mr. Goodbar and out of the great mare Crimson Jet Set. Just like Uno, he's also already produced some extremely successful horses. He's had multiple world champions and Congress top 10 earners uh, with not really that many babies out there showing. So. Irish is just another example of, of that type of an animal, and that's what we strive for here at Penn State, to produce high-quality, uh, good-minded, easy-to-work-with horses. Hi, my name is Ed Jefferseski, farm manager and veterinarian for the Penn State Horse Farm. Been here 19 years. Uh, right now we're in the Almquist Breeding Shed Lab. The Almquist Center here at Penn State has a long history of reproduction, mostly in cattle. Dr. John O. Almquist, who this was named after, actually won what people say is the equivalent of a Nobel Prize in reproduction. And now we've kind of switched to emphasis, at least in this building, to uh, equine reproduction rather than bovine reproduction. Back in the 1980s, Penn State was one of the leading breeders in the Quarter Horse Association. When I came, there was 10 mares and two stallions, so it was about 40, 50 horses. 
Now we're at about 75 horses. Having so many horses and only two full-time people means that we really rely on our students to do a lot of the work. And the nice part is, is when the students get to do all this work, uh, they learn a lot from the handling of the horses, handling the stallions, from the bowlings, they're in with the mayor and the pole, uh, helping the mayor if necessary. So we try to involve the students in everything that we do, anywhere from cleaning stalls and hauling horses to all the various veterinary procedures that we do. The nice part about being a farm manager here is, is I get to see a lot of students grow up um, as they come through the program. You know, we have certainly some that start as freshmen, some that start in various other stages of their career. Some of them go out into the horse industry and have horse-related jobs. Others of them have just pets, and others of them may never work with horses again, but they always have these memories of being here at the horse barn. My name is Dr. Bert Stanger. My name is Dr. Danielle Smarsh, and I am one of the advisors for the Penn State Equine Research Team. I'm also one of the co-advisors for the Penn State Equine Research Team, uh, which is a group of undergraduate students here at Penn State that all come together and get involved in the equine research that we do here on campus. We're standing here at the equine exerciser at the Penn State Horse Farm. This building that we're standing in front of is brand new. And this is a facility that is quite rare actually. You won't find this uh, at all universities. Since horses are predominantly used for their exercise uh, abilities, having this exercise where we can control the speed, put on six horses at the same time, is really going to help us improve our nutrition and exercise research here at Penn State. Our students have a really unique opportunity to pursue research with horses that really looks at exercise, that looks at nutrition, that looks at the integration of those two things together, which we all know is so important to the, the performance that we see from all of our horses. So our goal here is to really get students involved in trying to solve a lot of the problems that are present in today's horse industry, uh, utilizing facilities like this, um, working with the older students, the younger students, and the faculty and staff all that we have here. And the equine research team is really one way uh, that they're able to go about doing that. My name is Andrea Coker, and here at Penn State, I have two roles. I'm an equine extension specialist and instructor of equine science. And what that means is with my instructor of equine science role, I teach uh, animal science classes within the department. And then my other role is with extension in the state. So I work with the equine extension team, and I primarily focus on 4-H and youth within that role. And behind me actually is one of our many fields and pastures that we raise the brood mares and the foals and one of the great aspects of being here at Penn State with the many opportunities available. So what I love about seeing um, a student evolve from coming in as a freshman and they love horses but then by their senior year they see the array of careers and opportunities available to them um, and we're constantly talking to them and exposing students to various um, industries trying to see what they're interested in and how they can help the equine industry. Hi, my name is Madison Heilweil and I am the 2020 president of the Collegiate Horsemen's Association as well as a live-in here at the Penn State Horse Barn. As a Penn State Horse Barn live-in, you're responsible for working weekends, emergency situations, and the best part, helping full out a lot of mares. At the Penn State Horse Barn, we have four live-ins. Two live-ins live within these doors in the horse barn, how cool, and two live at a farmhouse we call the Pink House. The neat opportunity of being a live-in here at Penn State is your hands-on experience with the horses on almost a daily level. And we get to work over breaks, which gives us a little bit of additional experience and what it takes to really manage a farm and also getting to know these horses on a deeper level. Hi, 
my name is Brittany Eisman. Orson Eisman. I'm a 2008 graduate of Penn State animal science program. Currently, my husband and I own a 70-acre farm in the Knox area, which is Clarion County, Pennsylvania, and we raise quarter horses and chickens and dogs and kiddos, and uh, we have a three-year-old son named Decker and one on the way, and I'm actually a regional director for a company called Pennsylvania Farm Bureau. We're a member-driven organization, and um, we work for and with farmers and agriculturalists. I cover nine counties in the northwestern corner of the state as a director for Farm Bureau, um, but it all kind of started here. Over there on campus could get extremely overwhelming, especially for, for me uh, being a young girl who had never been away from home. So the horse farms for me, this was a safe haven. This is somewhere I came to breathe. This is somewhere I came to be, to be me. To, to just do something that I loved and um, be accepted for it and be around other people who love the same thing. My home at Penn State.